anointed lady who is going to minister in song. Put your hands together and let us receive Vivaldi tonight to bless us with a song. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, shout out to the Lord. Amen. I want you to tell your sister or your brother that if you have Jesus, please tell your neighbor, if you have Jesus, then you have everything. He's precious. He's more precious than anything in this world. Hallelujah. Jesus is my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Jesus is 
Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Amen. Can you feel the power of God tonight? Please settle down. We have with us tonight the mayor of Robert Sports tonight. And he's here to give us a word as we commence this powerful night of miracles. Please put your hands together and let us welcome the mayor of this city to come to bring us a word. What will a prophet a man if he should gain the whole world and do his do his soul? Evangelist melt and the interact. The acting superintendent on our Ivic Bunny Penny. The mass choir. The Paroma Chief Stroke Pastor Tewa District, Grand Kitmar County. The chairman and members of the Pastor Association of Grand Ketma County, fellow residents of Rawal Sport, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. The audience tonight reminds me of when Ketmont had our first game on this field. It is wonderful tonight in itself. That residents of Rossford have assembled to feel the presence of God. Satan has failed because he tried and cannot succeed. The lights went off. The men of God, the Christians, the Muslims who are here all converged. To pray and the light restored. And so we are out for business. On behalf of the residents and citizens of Rural Sport and those who have traveled from far and near for Grand Kidman County to pay respect to you because they know who you are. And the gout being put in my name as enemy of this beautiful city. We say you are most welcome. But we are not yet satisfied. Until then, our request is meant. What is it? We monitored on radios areas that you visited. Evangel Mills, you spent two nights. But here we're talking about one night. And so on behalf of the President of our sport, we say, please, spend two nights or two so we can enjoy your stay here. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for the mayor of this wonderful city, this beautiful city. Clap for Jesus as well. Are you ready to receive what God has for you tonight? I want you to relax. God has sent someone to bring you a song to prepare your heart for the great things God has for you. So please put your hands together and let us welcome Ida to bless us with a song. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to 
Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus. Do you believe Jesus loves you? At the back, do you believe God loves you? One of the ways God shows his love to us is to send us his best. And this week, I believe that the people of Robert Sports have experienced the greatest love of God. In receiving his servant that he has used over the nations of the world. Tonight, God has sent him to your life. He is going to minister his word to you. And he's also going to minister God's power to you. Your miracle is coming your way. Your healing is coming your way. Signs and wonders are coming your way. Tonight is a night of miracles. And if you believe in miracles, stand to your feet and with a shout, let's receive Evangelist Daniel Mills. Hallelujah. everyone shouted amen. amen. You may be seated if you have a seat. How many are expecting miracles tonight? Wow. I Hallelujah. Tonight is your night for a miracle. Jamame, 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 come back. I will bow and you are a person. I will bow at Jamame. Amen. I want to thank the mayor the superintendent, and also the pastors for welcoming us into your wonderful and very beautiful city of Robertsport. We are so excited to be here today. 
Abe bai ka sana we mo sangamanya kiazo ye momu kine na amu manu muto amami nu po amami nu abe bai ka sana mo ke umano amu amabo kamu ye kamu ani na ma wako me rawa sport. Hallelujah. What language are you speaking? Va. Va. Yeah. Is it sounding a bit like tree? <laughs> Some words. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. I hear that some people here from Ghana. Where are you? Give me a wave. Oh, wow. Wow. We are bringing you greetings from Ghana. Hallelujah. Tonight is a special night for you. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Tonight I know that God has a wonderful blessing for you. Kama ko bena be abo mo akwa me jamea. So mo mo pasa mo pasa na la. I'm going to preach for a short time. And then we are going to pray, and God is going to do a lot of miracles here. I, 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 uh, uh, I, I don't know why now. Kunu abe kum nyama fona. Awa I come back for ya. Ma, ma, ma ba we no akemu kamba mo ba. Hallelujah. And tonight I'm preaching about the Lamb of God. Abe na na kemu I cry mo ba. Fe ya so ma po ya mo ya ke lamb. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming to him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John abe manu jeneba abe anu kona jio amo anabi ansa fe nana amo ajeta ro o bawa menu be nana ba bi wai ma ai mo jumbe anu kafa mo jua awato Jesus Christ nabi ansa Jesus Christ is the just interpret what i say don't yes. preach okay. what i say you say don't say anything extra Jesus Christ is the lamb of god Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ is a special lamb which God has prepared for this whole world. Hallelujah. Do you want to receive the Lamb of God? Amen. Amen. Why was Jesus Christ a Lamb of God? Because Jesus Christ was slaughtered as a Lamb for you and for me. Jesus Christ, Nabi Ansa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ was slaughtered like a lamb for you and for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we we call Jesus Christ the Lamb of God, because he could have been called the cow of God, or the pig of God, or the goat of God, or the horse of God, but he was called the Lamb of God. But the Bible says there was a prophecy about somebody who was going to come like and he was going to behave like a lamb because every animal behaves differently. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Hallelujah. When you are going to kill a pig, it is different from if you are going to kill a lamb. If you take a pig and you try to kill it, it will run away. But a lamb will not run away. A lamb will stand there and wait for his turn to be sacrificed. So two thousand thousands of years ago, there was a prophet who described the person who was going to be the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. And when he prophesied, he said, who has believed our report and to whom of the is the arm of the Lord revealed? He shall grow up as a tender plant and a root out of a dry ground. He has no form or comeliness when we shall see him. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Hallelujah. He was oppressed and afflicted. Yet, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to a slaughter. And as a sheep before a shearer is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. During the wars in Liberia, so many people died. Some of the people, when they were going to kill them, they were screaming. Some were quiet. And the Bible is telling us that Jesus Christ was quiet. He was like a lamb. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And because of the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. Why did the Lamb of God come to this world? To take away our sins. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lamb is the the animal that carries all our sins away from us. God took your sins. God took my sins and put them on the lamb. And took the lamb and threw the lamb away. If God has not given a lamb for your sins, you will still have your sins. And the Bible says that God does not hear sinners. God cannot bless a sinner. So tonight, we are very happy that Jesus Christ came as a lamb of God to take your sins and my sins out of this world. Hallelujah. If you don't have such a lamb, you are in danger. What will you do with your sins? Your sins are still with you. But God took your sins. 
and put your sins on the lamb. Send the lamb out of this world. Go away. Out of this world. How many of you know that you are sinners? In Robert's pot. Put your hands down. How many have told a lie before? Lie. You have told a lie before. Raise up your hand. At the back, you have told a lie before. Raise up your hand. Hey. Robert's pot is full of liars. How many of you have told hundred lies before? One hundred since you were born. One hundred times you have told a lie before. Raise up your hand. Hey! What about the pastors on the stage? Ha! Ah, look at the pastors. So what are you going to do with your sins? You need something that will carry your sins out of this world. And that is why God sent a lamb so that we could take your sins and put it on Jesus and nail it to the cross and your sins will be gone out of this world. How many of you have stolen something before? Raise up your hand if you have stolen something before. Those at the back there, those sitting on the wall, if you have stolen something before, lift up your hand, I can see you. Hey. How many have stolen chicken from your mother's soup before? What does it mean? It means you are a thief. So Robert's pot is full of liars and thieves. Wow. How many of you have committed fornication before you sleep with somebody you are not married to the person? Lift up your hand. At the back, at the back there. And the pastors. Robert's pot is full of fornicators. Yeah. How many of you have been jealous of somebody before? Jealousy. Jealousy. <laughs> Lift up your hand. You were jealous. When you saw somebody, you were not happy that he was prospering. Raise up your hand. Hey! Robert's pot is full of liars, thieves, fornicators, and jealous people. How many of you have killed somebody before? What about abortion? Abortion. You are pregnant with somebody's husband, so you go and abort the baby. What about during the war? Some of you were fighting. Were you fighting in this area too? Or there was no fighting here? Oh, fighting. All here. Some of you killed a lot of people. Today you are looking as if you are innocent. But you are a killer. Even some of you women, you were soldiers and you were killing people. 
So Robert's pot is full of blood, bloodshed. So what are you going to do with all these sins? Can you go to heaven with this? Jesus told us a story. He invited, he said a great man invited people for dinner. And when the people came, one of them was not wearing the right garments. And when he came, he saw the man who was not wearing the right garment. And he came to the dinner. And he said, ah! Why are, you, why are you not wearing the right garment? Get up! Out of my wedding! You cannot go to heaven with your garment full of sin. You cannot attend the wedding. Let me answer at for me. I love I want to come on and I need love you. I'm going to go to the wedding. I'm going to be a man. I'm going to be a man. I'm going to be a man. In heaven, everybody wears white. And every time you sin, one black spot comes on the white. So some of you, there are a lot of black. If you see yourself in the spirit, a lot of black spots. Some of you, you are covered completely with black. Mm -hmm. The lies, fornication, stealing, bloodshed, jealousy. Everywhere is black now. You are fully covered. Christianity is the only religion where there is a lamb who takes away your sins. What? That is why I am a Christian. Because no matter what I do, I have always committing sins. I need a lamb of God to take away my sins. Because even though I'm a pastor, I've told lies, fornication, stealing, jealousy, murder, everything I've done some before. So tonight, so you have very, very good news. So one day, John the Baptist was baptizing people. And he saw Jesus. That time nobody knew Jesus. As soon as he saw him, he said, Look, that is the Lamb of God who is coming to take away the sins of the whole world. Hallelujah. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for our transgressions. Jesus Christ is the lamb. When they are going to kill the lamb, the lamb will be standing there and they take a knife and they will start cutting. And the lamb is quiet. I'm a, I'm a, be quiet. Quiet as you are cutting. And the blood will start coming out. The lamb will be standing there quiet. But a pig. A pig. It will, it will jump away. It will never stand there. They brought Jesus. Jesus Christ came to this world. Some people thought Jesus Christ was weak. But Jesus Christ was not weak. Jesus Christ was asked by his father to come and be a lamb. 
kama aling nabi ansa kama atusa ke lota ke miti bawako Jesus Christ was told by his father when you go to this earth don't be a king don't be a lord just be a lamb whatever they do to you allow them to do it to you nami ansa kama afa ke nami ansa ibe tan dunya ni o imala momo ni anti anti ti mo bako so Jesus came and they bent his back over like this and they started beating him on his back that's the lamb of God they beat him 39 times 39 and there were, there were nails in it each time the nail went into the meat it came out of the meat with blood by the time they finished beating Jesus all here was blood the lamb has started to die the lamb has put all your sins and the lamb has started to go out of this world hallelujah hallelujah are you excited about the lamb of God who takes away the sins you see, you did the put the, the sin on the lamb, and it's as though the lamb walked into the sea okay. and went away with your sins. Your sins are gone forever. By this time, Jesus began to die. Anybody who they beat like that, you will begin to die. Then they put a crown on his head with thorns. And your scalp is full of blood. When you cut your small, a lot of blood comes. They press it. And the blood started to come out. The lamb was going out of this world. The blood was getting was going out. Only five liters of blood. Five liters. Give me five bottles. One, two, three, four, five. Everybody has five liters of blood. Five of blood. 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 Jesus had five. Five of these. So, okay. So five bottles full of blood. The blood was coming out. The Lamb of God was now going. He was saying bye-bye. He was saying bye-bye to the world. He looked at Mary Magdalene. He looked at Peter. He looked at John. He was going bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm taking your sins. I'm going. Bye-bye. I'm taking your sin. I'm taking your lies. I'm taking your murder. I'm taking your fornication. I'm going with it. Bye-bye. The Lamb of God, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. But he was not yet gone. So they nailed his hand. And they nailed his hand. And the blood started coming out. And he was going. He was going. Going. He was feeling weak. That they nailed his feet. Hallelujah. Thank you. And then, Jesus. when your blood gets finished, the first sign in the hospital, in the hospital, when your blood is going, the first, the person will say, I'm feeling thirsty. Yeah. If, if you are in a hospital, I'm a doctor. If you are in a hospital, your blood is going out. Let's say somebody is bleeding. The last thing the person will say before he goes, he will say, I'm thirsty. I'm feeling thirsty because all the blood is all the water is going. And so Jesus, the Lamb of God, he was just about to go. He was he was left with a few minutes left. Just a few was taking your sins out. He was going. He was going with your lies. He was going with your stealing. He was going with your fornication. He was going with your murder. He was going out of this world with your sins. And then to be sure, to be sure that he was dead, they took a big sword. By that time, Jesus was saying, it is finished. But they, they were not sure it's, it's not finished. So they took a big knife. Ah! And then they turned it 
like this. They turn it and pull it out. And then inside, and they turn it and pull it out. And more blood, the last remaining blood and the last remaining water came out. And then Jesus, that was his last moment. He said, Jesus said, it is finished. I finished. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And he went out of this world with all our sins, all our mistakes, all our crimes, all our jealousy, all our envy, all of our murder, all our wickedness. Everything he took it out of this world. Amen. He took it out. That is why we came here tonight to Robert's spot to tell you about the Lamb of God who has come to take away my sins. I am from Ghana. Jesus came to die for me. And you are from Liberia. And Jesus also came to die for you. He died. He says, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. The whole world. Jesus did not just die for Americans. He died for the whole world, including Robert Spott. All of you. He took all your sins away if you believe in him tonight. Tonight, I don't know who you are. I don't know why you came here. But I came to offer you the Lamb of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. To wash away your sins and make you a new person. That, that, you know, there are some people they say they are going to pray three times a day or seven times a day or ten times a day. But what I want to tell you that if you pray three times a day, even if you have killed somebody and you pray, it has not taken it away. You have still killed somebody and you are praying. Amen. So you are a praying killer. <laughs> During the Liberian war, a lot of people were praying before they killed. I saw them with my eyes. I saw some young people in a film. When they are going to kill people, then they say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. They pray. Then they go, they are going to kill. Yeah. So when you pray, it doesn't mean that your sins have gone. It means you are a praying killer. You are a praying fornicator. You are a praying liar. Mm. You are a praying thief. Mm. But as for thief, you are a thief. And God has a list of all the things you have stolen before. As for me, I'm very happy that I, I know Jesus Christ. Because I don't know what I will do. Without the Lamb of God. That is why Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. I will bless you. I will give you peace. I will give you rest. What can wash away your sins? Only the blood of Jesus. One day there was a certain man. He killed somebody. And when he killed a person, he, will, he killed a person in, in the farm. And when he killed a person, he, he washed the knife and ran to his house and washed himself. You know something? Hold on, let me just preach. Just hold on. He, he washed himself. Hallelujah. I will let him summarize. He washed himself. And he washed away all the blood. Nobody saw him. So when he went to the house, his wife didn't know what happened because he washed his shirt. All the blood was in the shirt. He washed it. His wife didn't see. So he was going on. Nobody knew that he had killed somebody. But one day, about three months later, he was sleeping 
Then he got up in the night and started walking. As he was walking, he started saying, Oh, blood, blood, where are you? So his wife got up, 2 a.m. His wife saw him and said, Hey, what is my husband saying? He was saying, Blood, oh, this man, oh, his blood is too much. His blood is too much. So the, the wife stood up and listened to the husband. What is he saying? Every night he woke up. Every night he woke up and he start walking and talking. You see, even though he has washed the blood out of his shirt, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he has not washed the blood out of his heart. He has not washed the sin out of his heart. The sin was there. The matter was there. The sins were there. Water cannot wash away your sins. No. I said water cannot wash away your sins. No. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away your sins. I come from here, so I know Allah. Then can I borrow any? I'm a, I'm a more I'm not saying you. I'm a ta, I'm a wanga, a wanga ko bena, a miyako, I'm a, I'm a ta, a muse ma soke, I'm more fa. Jema abo a kaus kaus akpabe ya, kabe be kyo a kuno a kalo. Oh wait, 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 kuma bema, wait, I'm a, a muse a so. I don't know. Then na kaya be miya mana, wait, wait, wait. Then be a plan na, ba I'm a for me iko kuma. Tonight, if you don't listen to what I'm saying, one day you will go to hell. There is nobody in heaven who is wearing black or somebody who is wearing white with spots. Everybody is wearing white. So, once you are here with your sins, it's not that God doesn't like you, but the dress that you have is covered with sin. And you cannot go there. And there are only two places. Either heaven or down to hell. Hello. So tonight, I want you to open your heart. Because if you don't take care, you will go to hell. The Bible tells us there was a rich man. Very rich man. Maybe he used to live in Robert's Port. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And he was having houses everywhere. He was wearing purple. Color purple. Purple. And he was eating, drinking, chicken every day. And the Bible said there was a beggar man named Lazarus who was laid at the gate of the rich man. The, uh, the beggar was very poor. And the dogs were licking his sores. And one day, one of the dogs beat the man. He beat the man and started eating. So the beggar died. And when he died, angels took him straight to heaven. You see, I am a doctor. I went to medical school for seven years. We will learn everything except what happens to you after you die. That's why we don't learn it. But the Bible tells us what happens to you after you die. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible tells us what happens to you after you die. Amen. I see ya. See, see, mama. I tell friend that I be moko. Amu, then come a kia mu. But Baba dey a man. Amu, I, 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 I be sure amu wey na mu a king. Amu a fa. A fa me no kaba ata ata a jene. Hallelujah. So God is warning us now. The rich man, when the rich man died, he did not know God. So he went down to hell. Down. He went down, 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 down. Under. You see, under the earth, all the people who died in life, all the people who died in the war, there are two places they were. When they died, some went up, some went down. Some went up, some went down. When you die, you go up or you go down. The Bible said that the poor man was carried, he was carried up into Abraham's pussy, far away. But the rich man, he went down to hell. Will you go to hell or will you go to heaven? Huh? Are you, it's not just by saying. You don't just stand and say, oh, after me, I'll go to heaven. No. So the rich man, he went down into the fire. And when he was there in the fire, he saw Abraham far away and he saw Lazarus. And he said, hey, that guy, I know him from Robert's Spot. Hmm. He's a beggar. Tell him that I say I'm calling him. You see, a lot of big men, they don't know that they have become nothing when they die. 
Yeah, they don't know. They don't know. And the rich man, he went down to her and he was thirsty. And he was crying for water. Water. Just one drop of water like this. One drop. You see, some of last yesterday, two days ago, I went to a prison in Buchanan. And I saw a lot of prisoners, Liberians in the prison. And I saw a bucket of water in the prison. And I told them that there is a prison that is wilder than any prison on earth. There is not even one drop of water there. Yeah. But in Buchanan prison, there is water. But in hell, there is no water. The rich man is shouting, one drop. I want one drop of water. Because he saw that the poor man was enjoying. The poor man was drinking. He was drinking Coca-Cola. He was drinking. He said, oh, if I can get even just one drop. Just one drop. One drop of water. Just one drop. What the poor man is enjoying, if I can have only one drop. Oh. Hey. Listen, tonight, tonight, listen carefully. Listen, I came to warn you because a lot of people in Liberia, they say they are Christian, but they are not Christians. Yeah. They say they are Christian, but they are not Christians. They say they are born again, but they are not born again. When they die, they will go to hell. I'm telling you. That's why I came to warn you. All of you listening to me, don't sit in at the back. Don't stand in over there. Don't stand on the side. Listen to me carefully. You may not hear this again. The rich man was begging. One drop. And Abraham told him, listen, do you remember? Do you remember? Everybody look at my face. Oh. Because when you die, you will remember. They will ask you, do you remember? They will ask you, do you remember? Do you remember in Liberia, you have had presidents, they were in their castle, some people came and killed them in the presidential palace. They killed them. Later on, others also came and killed them also. Mm. And the question you ask, oh, do you remember? Do you remember how you were also killing somebody? Today they are killing you. You don't, you don't remember, eh? God will ask you when you, when you die, he will ask you that question. Do you remember? You remember? Do you remember that fair guy, that bright guy? He came to Robert's spot. He was preaching. He said, remember my face? Look at my hand. Look at my fair hand. God showed, told me to show you my hand. To remind you and to warn you to come to him now. You will remember my face. He said, do you remember? When you were in your lifetime, you received your good things. And likewise, Lazarus' evil things. But now thou art tormented and he is comforted. And besides all this, there is between us and you a great gulf. There is a big gap. We cannot cross. We cannot cross. We cannot cross. You cannot cross over. If you want to go to heaven, you have to go from Robert's spot to heaven. If you want to go to hell, you go from Robert's spot straight to hell. But once you are in heaven or hell, you cannot cross again. Amen. There is no road from heaven to hell. There is no road from hell to heaven, but there is a road from earth to heaven. And the rich man started to beg Abraham, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you. He said, I said, send, he said, I have five brothers at Robert's. I have five brothers. If you can send Lazarus again to my father's house, that he may speak. If one rise from the dead, they will be persuaded. Abraham told him, if they don't hear the prophets mm. and the pastors who are preaching, they, neither will they be persuaded though one rise from the dead. He said, they have Moses and the prophet. Let them hear them. Let them hear them. Tonight, you better hear what I'm saying and hear it well. Don't fool! There are people who fool when I'm preaching. You see, a lot of people have laughed at me when I, when I became a preacher. And when I was preaching, a lot of people have laughed at me. But when they were dying, they did not laugh. I have people, when I told them, there is a man, I told him, you must give your life to God. He laughed at me and insulted me. I didn't say anything. About four months later, he became sick. And when he was dying in the hospital, he sent people to come and call me. 
Meanwhile, he's not in my church. I don't know him. I just saw him somewhere. I said, sir, you must be born again. Recently, God sent me to a rich man to speak to him. I told him, sir, I told him about the rich man. I said, remember, one day you will remember what I'm saying. Tonight is your night. Why did God send his son to be a lamb so that we can put all the sins of the world and he will go out of this world with your sins and my sins? Tonight, it's important that you open your heart to receive Jesus Christ. Otherwise, I tell you, you are lost. You are, you are playing, but it's a matter of time. It's just a, look, 50 years from now, almost everybody here will be dead. Check, oh, 50 years from now, almost everybody on stage and sitting here, 50 years from now, most of us will be dead. Most of us. Which one will be your home? Heaven or hell? Uh-huh. Which one will be your house? Which one will be your address? Will, will they say, you, you move from Robert's spot to hell? That's why God sent his son. You, you see, it's a far way to come here. But we came here because of your life. Because of your soul. He said, do you remember? My son, remember. Tonight, I want you to open your heart and receive Jesus Christ. One day there was a pastor like these pastors. He was an Assemblies of God pastor. Assemblies of God. I'm sure you have Assemblies of God here. Yeah, he was an Assemblies of God pastor. One day he finished preaching on Sunday. And he came to rest in the hotel. It was a convention. When he sat down in his room, Jesus appeared to him in the room. And Jesus said, I want to show you something. Follow me. And he took him down into hell. This boy, he used to be in the university and he had a roommate. And he was a very bad boy. But he gave his life to Jesus and he changed. When he changed, he even went to Bible school and became a pastor, Assemblies of God pastor. So when he, when Jesus appeared, he told him, you are a pastor, but you are not a good pastor. You are a pastor, but you are not a good pastor. We are not concerned about souls. I want to show you something. It was Sunday, Sunday evening. So they went down, down, down. Jesus took him down. The assemblies of God passed and took him down. When he went, he saw a lot of people. All the things in the Bible were true. People were crying. Ah, ah, People were wailing. People were calling, screaming. The Bible says there shall be gnashing of teeth and wailing, wailing and gnashing of teeth. All over. As he was going, as he was going through hell, suddenly he came and he saw somebody that he knew. When he saw him, he was surprised. Do you know who it was? It was his roommate in university. You see, in university, they stay in the room two by two. This guy, when he was in the room in the in the university, that was the guy he was sleep staying with. So when he saw him there. He, he didn't know that he had died. So he asked him, ah, what are you doing here? And he, he, said, to his, he said to the Assemblies of God, Pastor, he said, this last Friday, last Friday, there was an accident. There was a car accident and I died. I died on Friday. It was Sunday night. And after Jesus said, that's all, let's go. He took him back to the hotel room. When he got to the hotel room, he was shaking. But he had not heard that his friend, his friend was dead. So the next, it was late in around 11. So he could not call his mother. So he called his mother on Monday. On Monday, he called his mother. And he, he was talking to his mother. He said, Ma. Ma. This and that and that. Have you heard anything about? Then she said, yeah. I forgot to tell you. There was a terrible accident on Friday. You remember your roommate? Because the mother knew him and his roommate. You remember your roommate? He died in an accident last Friday. The pastor was shaking like a leaf. He was shaking. Because Jesus said, you are a pastor, but you are not a good pastor. You are concerned. You're, everything is prosperity. Everything is motivation. You are not teaching the people about heaven and hell. And he took him down to hell and brought him up. He was shocked. Sunday, the guy died on Friday. And all those in hell, they know, when, they, know they died in an accident. 
The guy knew that he died in an accident. Because he told him that I died in an accident on Friday, just this Friday. I just came here. I just came here. You remember? That is why we came to rob a spot. To warn you and to tell you there is a place, a hell, a prison. God does not want you to go there. That is why he gave his son as a lamb. Just to come quietly. You shouldn't talk at all. Whatever they say, don't say anything. They beat Jesus on the cross. They slapped him. They spat on him. Don't say anything. I've sent you to behave like a lamb. Yes, sir. You are a lamb now. One day you'll be a king, but for now you are a lamb. Don't talk. Whatever they say, don't talk. Just be quiet. And they beat him. They crucified him. They insulted him. They stripped him naked. And he died. And when he went out of this world, he went with all the sins of the whole world. And that is why tonight I came to offer you this blood. This lamb. A lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And tonight, if you open your heart, stop fooling, stop fooling, stop fooling. Can't you see we are serious? Can't you see I'm talking about your life? Can't you see that if you joke with what I'm saying, one day you will go to hell? Can't you see that? Can't you see? Do you think this is a joke? Do you, do you feel this is a joke? Do you think we are joking to come here? Do you know what it costs us to come here? Do you see this as a joke? Stop fooling with your life. Your life is hanging like this in the balance. Any day you can go out of this world. It's time to turn around. It's time to turn around. Yes, sir. And come to God in Robert's pot. If you are a Christian, you call yourself a real Christian. Everybody will see that you are a Christian. Not that you say, our oh, father, which art in heaven, you go and kill and murder people. Nobody should give offering when I'm preaching, please. Tonight, tonight, I want to pray with you. This lamp of God has come. If you joke with it, you say, I'm a Christian man. I'm a Christian man. You Christian man? I can also say, I'm blue. I'm a blue man. I'm a yellow man. But it doesn't make me yellow. It doesn't make me blue. Mm. Saying it doesn't mean that it is so. It's time for you to open your heart and receive the Lamb of God. He was wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Our iniquities were laid upon him. And tonight, by his stripes, you can be healed as well. How many want to receive the Lamb of God in rubber spot? Stop at the back there, at the back there, how many of you want to receive? Stop fooling, I'm telling you. Listen to me. Don't joke. This is serious. If you want to receive the Lamb of God, you want your sins to be washed away, stand up. I want to pray with you. Stand up and lift your two hands like this. If you don't want Jesus, don't stand up. Please, sit down. But if you want Jesus Christ to wash away your sins, stand up now and I'm going to pray with you. If you want Jesus to wash away your sins. Right now. Those at the back there sitting on the wall. If you want Jesus, stand up. Don't sit on the wall. Stand up and lift your hands up. If you want Jesus. If you don't want Jesus, sit on the wall. Just sit there. Do whatever you are doing. But if you want Jesus tonight, then lift up your hand, your two hands, and say, Whatever I pray, pray after me. Say, Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for today. I know I am a sinner. Oh my Jesus. I have committed many, many, many sins. I have stolen. I've told lies. I've done many bad, bad things. But tonight, I come to the cross, the cross of Jesus. Oh, my Lord, please forgive me. Please wash me with your blood, with your blood. Please wash me 
with your blood. Wash away my sins. Take away my sins. Oh, Lamb of God, I believe in you today. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The Son of God. I believe in you. Take away my sins tonight. Make me a new person. From tonight. Say, make me a new person. From tonight. Come into my heart. And change me. Thank you, Lord. For hearing my prayer. Tonight. Dear Lord. From today. I belong to you. And I will serve you. Say, Jesus. From today. I will obey you. I will follow you. I will serve you. Lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Please write my name. Please write my name. Jesus, write my name in the book of life. Do you want your name to be in the book of life? Yes. Say Jesus. Jesus. Please write my name. Jesus, my name. In, the in the book of life. From tonight. I belong to Jesus. And I will serve Jesus Christ. Thank you Lord. For hearing me. Hearing my prayer. Tonight. Now say after me. Say after me. Satan. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. From tonight. From tonight. Me and you is finished. Me and you is finished. Satan. Satan. From today. From today. I will not follow you again. I will not follow you again. Satan. Satan. From today. From today. I belong to Jesus Christ. I belong to Jesus Christ. And I will serve Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Wave your hand. Say, thank you, Jesus. Say, I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for me today. I will never be the same again. I will never be the same again. I will follow Jesus, and I will obey Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Jesus. You are the Lamb of God who has taken away my sins. I love you, Jesus. And I thank you, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Say after me from tonight, everybody in Robert's spot will see that I'm a new man. I'm a new man. I'm a new woman. I'm a new person. I'm born again. I'm following Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Clap for yourself. Clap for Jesus. Pray with them in your language. Just a short prayer. Whatever you pray, they should pray after. Now me say it after. Na me answer. Na jumia kavai. Haka tonye. Mwa meti moko kambeta ejene. Komu nawi ensa? Namfao. Wa jema me? Naibia. Kami ti nam nambasa moko. Kom kama ya nya. Kamina. Amen. How many are happy you have given your life to Jesus tonight? I want to give you one of my wonderful books. 
If not, is there only one we are giving them? I want to give you two if you have. All right? Do you have? Okay. So if you want, those of you who prayed, I'm going, so that when I go, you can read this book and, and pray. Amen. Are you happy about that? Are you happy about that? Do you want one of my books? It is a very powerful book. All those who have read this book have been blessed. So if you want one of this book, lift your hand and somebody's coming to give you one. And somebody's coming to give you a second one too, please, tonight. One night in Night of Miracles. So we need to give them a blessing, extra blessing. Okay. So please lift your hands and receive the books as they come. Counselors are also coming to write down your name. But don't forget that if you pray this prayer and you are getting the book tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock. Yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock, there is a special Holy Spirit service here. For, for everybody who prayed, tomorrow morning, we have a miracle service and Holy Spirit service right here tomorrow morning. All to Jesus I surrender all to
He carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted, yet he was moved for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquity. The punishment that brought us peace. The punishment that brought us peace was upon. Jesus. 
his wounds. By his wounds. We are healed. We are healed. By his wounds. By his wounds. We are healed. By his wounds. We stand to your feet. We are going to pray for miracles now. The Bible says he was also by his wounds, by his stripes we are healed. Amen. Shh. Stand up everybody. God is going to open the eyes of the blind tonight. God is going to open the eyes of the blind tonight. He has already done it. Everywhere you are. Listen, the Lamb of God did not only take away our sins, He took away our sicknesses. By His wounds, by His stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. And when Jesus came to this world, He came shh, quiet. Hey, quiet. No one should talk. No, hey, hey, don't talk. Quiet. By his wounds, we are healed. Nobody should give out books now. It's time for miracle healing. God's power is in this place. When Jesus came to this earth, he did every miracle because it was a prophecy about him that through him, we are healed. Hallelujah. And tonight, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday he's the same today and he's the same forever he's alive tonight and he's here to do miracles in your life do you believe that Jesus is the Lord who can heal you tonight I am the Lord that he
many know that Jesus is a specialist healer? You see, there was nobody like Jesus who could heal eyes, he could heal legs, hallelujah, he could heal your waist, he could heal the deaf and the dumb, he could heal the skin, leprosy, he could heal women who were bleeding, he could do every kind of miracle. Because another name for Jesus is Jehovah Rophi, the Lord who can heal. And tonight, I said tonight, he's here right now. He's here right now to heal you of every plague, every curse. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing right now. You are the Lord that healeth me. Oh, 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 you are the Lord. You are the Lord. you have, put your hand there. If it is your breast, put your hand on your breast. If it is your abdomen, somebody's being healed in the breast. If it is your abdomen, put your hand on your abdomen. If it is your back or your waist, put your hand there. The power of the Holy Ghost is flowing right now in this place. Receive your healing right now. Miracles are happening right now. I, I'm speaking and the miracles are happening. God is healing somebody's child. But Jesus also healed children. Father, thank you for your power that is flowing in this place. Satan, I pluck you off the people now. In Jesus' name, come out. Every demonic manifestation, every demonic presence, I bind you, I bind your power. I bind devils, I bind demons, I bind evil spirits, I bind plagues, I bind blindness, deafness, dumbness, paralysis. In Jesus' name, I bind the evil spirits that have plagued the people like flies all these years. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be loose right now in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for miracles. Thank you for healing. Thank you for your power that is flowing in this place right now. Lord,
you could not do, begin to do it. Examine yourself. Miracles have happened. Now, if God has healed you, check yourself very quickly. It's very simple. If God has healed you, maybe you couldn't walk, but now you can walk. Maybe you had a pain, but the pain is gone. Maybe you could not see, but now you can see. Whatever the problem was, if God has touched you, not that you are hoping that it will happen in the future, but right now as you are standing here, you can see that something has happened. God has touched you. If God has healed you, then lift up your hand right now. If God has touched you, lift up your hand. If God has healed you, I want you to come to the front. Come to the front. I want to take some testimonies. I want to pray with you. If you are here, you couldn't see, but now you can see. You couldn't hear, but now you can hear. God has touched you. God has healed you. Where's my interpreter? If God has touched you, God has healed you. Come quickly to the front right now. Just come from wherever you are standing. Come, come, come. Come from there. If God has healed you, something has happened. Maybe you had a pain, but the pain is gone. Maybe you had a problem. Let him come. Come, come to the front. You could not stand, but you can stand right now. Quickly, come from wherever you are. You may be at the back. You may be at the side. Miracles are happening right now. Wherever you are, if God has healed you, come, come right now. Come to the front. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you right now. Wherever you are, wherever you are, if God has healed you, if God has done something, come to the front right now. I'm going to pray with you right here in the front on the stage, wherever you are. Come on. Come on. We adore you. Not that you are believing it to happen in the future, but right now you can see that something has happened. Come quickly, 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 quickly. It's a night of miracles. It's a night of miracles. It's a night of miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, praise of peace. Oh, we adore you. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Oh, we adore you. Wherever we you are, you. if God has healed you, come. If God has healed you, come. Oh, I want to pray with me. you right now. Right oh, now. You may be far on the map. Jesus is the one 
Jesus tonight God is healing many people this woman for the past one year has not been able to urinate well she urinates in very small quantities small 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 for a year you can see that even her face is swollen but tonight when she came she came with her mother she's down there when she came from the time she came here until you pray the power of God has started here and she's beginning to urinate normally, normally, normally. Wow. Tell us the problem. Since I got sick one year now, when I'm going to the bathroom, I shouldn't, I can't urinate well. But since I came on the PC, I go three times in the bathroom now. Three times already. Clap your hands yeah. for Jesus. My God is good. Oh. Yeah. You cannot urinate. No, it can just come small, small and stop. But since I came, I and was your face swollen? Yes, my whole body, the stumble, everything. Ah. Yeah. Doctor, what is this? I'm sure she's been suffering from a kidney disease, chronic glomerulonephritis, it can be due to renal failure, or nephrotic yeah, syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome, yes, a kidney disease. But the power of God has touched this woman. You have we went three times already. Already? Yes. You can see her. Her body is swollen. Look at it. Wow, this is edema, generalized. And urinating is one of the symptoms of this condition. But the power of God has touched this woman. That she could not urinate at all in small, small amount. But tonight, already just this evening from 7 o'clock to this time, she has wooed three times. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for Jesus. Everything, I double 
God's power has begun to work in this. Father, I thank you for deliverance from the spirit thank of death. You. In the name thank of Jesus. Thank you for your healing power. Wow. In Jesus thank name. you, Lord. Give the Lord a mighty clap of praise. Everything a double double. Everything a double double. Hey, everything a double double. Olivia. Too much feedback on stage. Feedback on stage. Don't come. Evangelist, for two years, this man has been blind. Wow. That's the daughter. He says his father could not see at all. But this evening, the power of God touched him. I told him, do what I do. Look at it properly. He can see. Is it true? He was not, she told me, said he was not seeing at tell all. Tell her, tell her. What happened? Again, I didn't do it again. Tell God, thank you for today. I see my father. See, do I tell God, thank you? Wow! Everybody shout Jesus. He was blind, but God has touched his eyes. Are you happy tonight? Are you yeah. happy? Uh, where are you? Come and help us. Do you believe in Jesus? Yeah. I believe Jesus. Does yeah. your father believe in Jesus? Yes. Wow. Are you happy? Yes. Give the Lord a mighty clap for me. This man could not see. God has touched him for the last for two, two years. years. He could not see, but now he can see. Can you see me? Can you see me? Can you see me? Yeah. Can you see me? Okay. Everything not double double. Hey, everything not double double. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a jam. Give the Lord a jam. Give the Lord a jam. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. What a night of miracles in Romans 4. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Everybody shout Jesus. Everybody shout Jesus. Come on and shout Jesus. Hallelujah. Many miracles tonight. Clap your hands for Jesus. Doctor, this, what's happening? This woman, for a long time, has had severe pain in the lower abdomen. So severe, she came tonight with the pain. But as the evangelist prayed, the power of God touched her, and the pain she has had is gone tonight. Gone. Yes. What happened Tell to her? you? I self alone, I've been sick. Having stomach complaint from hospital to hospital. No way. But now when I came there, see me while sitting, it was hurting me. I'm feeling the moving. But now, glory be to God, it dance more. Lift him up. Come on, lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Higher. Doctor, what could this pain be? She could have an infection, a pelvic inflammatory disease. The pain could be due to pain from fibroids. Fibroids. Fibroids or an infection of the ovaries. We call it ophritis or wow. the tubes, appendicitis. This is a doctor from Ghana, a specialist. He, he teaches in the Ghana Medical School. So I brought him to explain the miracles. Because in Africa, they'll just say, my ear was paining me and it is gone. So we don't understand. So you say it can be what? She's, it can be due to fibroids. Fibroids. Which, which degenerates. Wow. It can also be due to an infection. We call it pelvic PID. PID. It could be due to, you know, as a woman, her ovaries are here. The X, where the, the X, X comes the from. The X, yes. We call it ophritis. Wow. Or the tubes through which the X will pass. We call it salpingitis. Wow. Yes, or maybe it's a combination. We call it salpingo ophritis. Wow. And the power of God has, and she had the pain in the service. Do you have the pain here? Yes. And after he prayed, the pain is gone. Wow. Sorry. I am not feeling it again. Wow. It could also be colitis. It could also be bowel, some other yes, bowel colitis, yes. Bowel. Father, thank you for your healing. Power. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a mighty clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you
is now very alert. He's looking at you. He is a mighty God. Jesus is a mighty God. He's smiling. He's smiling. He's smiling. He's smiling. He's a mighty, mighty. He's a smiling God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He is a smiling God. Doctor, yeah, he's just smiling. What's happening? Hallelujah. This man has had severe back pain. He could not even bend to touch his feet. But the power of God touched him when he was praying. The pain he has had is gone. He wow. can bend. Bend over, bend over. Everything now double, double. Come on. Everything now double. Is the pain double, gone? Double. Oh, wait. The pain gone away from my body. How long? For so many, I think two or three years. Three years? Yes. Doctor, what is this? What disease is this? This pain can be due to um, spondylosis of the lumbar spine. Or it can also have what we call a paraspinal muscle spasm in the lumbar region. Wow. You could have also had a spondylolisthesis. Wow. And the power of God has touched this man. Spondylosis is healed in tonight. Robert's tonight. Give the Lord a mighty clap. Bend. Bend. Bless you. Yeah. Bend again. Bend. No pain. No pain. Say, no pain. No pain. Wow. Listen. I know a man pain and the doctors told him the pain was worrying him in the back so the doctors told him they can do operation but if they do the operation maybe he will walk maybe he will not walk and 
he did the operation just like this. Now he cannot walk again. He cannot walk. He's a pastor. He cannot walk again. Just this, what we see is on the low side. So this is a miracle. God has delivered him. Father, thank you for your power tonight, your healing. Thank you. Jesus. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. Clap Everybody your hands. Blow your trumpet. Hallelujah. Doctor, what's happening? This woman is an ulcer patient. Wow. And she says that she used to pass tools with blood and severe pain. She came tonight with the pain, the ulcer pain. But as you pray, the power of God touched her. The pain she has had for many years is totally gone. What happened to you? Praise the Lord. Well, I better thank you to God and praise to him. I've been sick for almost two years in Bombay Hill. I just, my sister husband called me this week. Say, I beg you come Sunday in Rawa Sport. My said Sunday morning, I took my car, I came. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the friend. I praise God. Thank you. I will hit it. God, I really hit me tonight because... What was the pain? I had hush on me. I went on my I took the, 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 I went on all the machine. I saw the soul in my side, my stomach. I can't eat when I eat sometimes. For me, sometimes I can't eat all my pain like. So they say I go out like, but when I reach, I just feel hungry. And I feel happy to myself. And no more pain in my stomach. I feel in pain now. Give the Lord a mighty clap of And what, what she's saying is serious because when you have ulcer, and you eat and vomit, it will be due to obstruction. Fibrosis can lead to obstruction. You eat and the food comes out. So God has really delivered this woman has gone on for, a, for a very long time. And we have what we call pyloric stenosis. Pyloric stenosis. And that power, the power of God has healed this woman Father, from this thank condition. thank you for your power tonight. In Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Evangelist for three years, this woman was lim- what how you were doing before you came here. How were you walking? That's how she was walking for three years. Is it true? Do it properly. Let me see. Do it for, for evangelist to see how you are walking. Is pain in the leg like that for three years? And now and she's now. so excited about that. Now, now walk towards the evangelist and show what him. <laughs> This is what? That's your sister. Our other sister. That's your sister. Did you know her? She was not well. Don't be calling me when I eat my rovia that she's sick or I mean, this afternoon when I came. She told me about the pussy. I said, Well, I I mean, I'm in Africa. I said, You're trying to reach here. Come this way, my dear. Come. Look at her walk. She Look was in walk. bed. She was in bed. This evening. God's power has touched her. She was, she, 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 she was in bed. She was in bed. She was in bed. She was in bed. She She's so excited. She's all the pastors. Hallelujah. Everybody shout Jesus. Everybody shout Jesus. This woman this evening. Right. Tell us what happened to you. My brother used to be heading from P to here and I go all over in the hospital to take tablet. Take tablet so he can work. Who are in pain? But now I try and smoke. Where was in pain? Generally, general yeah. bodily pain. Oh, body. She's been to hospital. They've given her medication. Wow. It's not going. Is the pain gone? Try and smoke more. Try and smoke more. I'll take it right here. Father, thank you for your thank you. total power and miracle healing tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. Olivia, what is this man? 
been blind since 1990, 1995. This man has been blind since 1995. Now, this evening, when he said lay hands, they did. And then suddenly, his eyes opened, he sees, but not too clearly. But I believe that the power of God has done it already. And he sees something. Yes, he's seeing. He's even identified my hands and all that. Wow. He's... He's my father. Okay, I think he lost his sight in 1985. Our sisters in America, they sent money here to help him. When the nursing ship came, we carried him, and they told him that the man can see no more. So, you know, I gave him a bit of tears. But he's my father. Then what must this happen to him? Then when I heard a few coming today, I decided not to go to work. But let me pay him. Let him receive the healing. And I have the faith. Then after that, after the long prayer went on, I asked him, Puga, can you see me? He said, yes. I said, oh, my father, I have you on. He said, pray, pray. I said, praise God. Wow. Hallelujah. Say, say, Oluwa, say, Oluwa, say, Oluwa, say, Oluwa, say, Oluwa, say. Come on, lift him up. 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 Lift him up, lift him up. Give the Lord a shout, a shout, a shout, a shout. I'm not going to get away. I'm 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 going to get away. Why is he crying? But now he, yeah, he, he lost his sight. So he cried for the sorrow that he is had. I told him, never mind, God can do everything. There's nothing that Jesus can do. So that you have the faith, your faith shall make you well. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Doctor, what's happening? A year ago, this young man fell from a tree and broke his back. He could not bend down at all. But tonight, the power of God touched him as he came and he's able to bend down. Bend and let's see. That pain from, from falling. Down. Tell us what happened to you. I fell from a tree. When? Last year. And, and what happened to you? I could not bear down good. And what happened tonight? Tonight I see myself bearing down good. I gave God the glory. Wow. Did you feel anything? No. You didn't feel anything? No. You just be able to bend? Yeah. Wow. Father, thank you for your power in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a clap offering. He is a mighty Olivia. God. Evangelist, this woman was born with, she said that since, since she knew, she, since she became a human being, she always had pain in the stomach. Very severe pain. pain. So she's carried this pain all her life. That's all she's known. But tonight, wow. the pain just disappeared. It disappeared. Yes. What happened? I tell God. What happened to you? What you have pain? Yes. Where was the pain? Down my stomach. Is the pain gone? Yes, it's gone. It's tell gone. God, thank you. Tonight? Yes. Wow. Give Jesus a mighty clap offering. Father, thank you for your He is a mighty God. Hallelujah. Since 1992, this woman has had severe abdominal pain. Tell us. Yeah, I said since 1992, I have a stomach complaints. And I take medicine at the side. The money said to me for my hand. How can I hold you coming here? I said, let me go and try. Ask for the memo, ask for for me. So I came now. The pain I was feeling first. I tell God, thank you now. My peace is go away from me. Tonight. Uh, yes. The where, was the, where, was the pain? where was the pain? Where was the pain? That, that was really the pain. This side? Yeah. Yes. This side? Yes. Doctor, what is this? this? This type of pain for many years is typical of irritable bowel syndrome. Wow. They take medications. They go to the hospital. They do tests. It doesn't stop. Irritable bowel syndrome. Wow. It's 
is that likely Father, thank but you the power of God has made us complex problem. Hallelujah. Olivia, what's happening here? This lady spent six days at the hospital because of malaria. So she was discharged and yet when she was coming today, high temperature, she was shivering and then after the prayer, everything has ceased. She is perfect. Give the Lord a clap of her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus. Has God touched you tonight? Hallelujah. I have to die to be here. The baby like just from here, I don't want to hold to the hospital. My sister to the hospital, they discharge me. I went mother, I was still sick. My king, I still if you want to give me a time, even last night, I had a still my life. Because of that, I don't be out on the day. Stand in there, I'm here. My sister, I'm still happy with her jacket. When I come in, I said, I'm still cool when we see me back. My mother said, go for the jacket. I said, no, I'm not going for the jacket. Let me see something. But I stand in there, I and I feel no I tell God. Jesus, ah. thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. He is a mighty God. Doctor, what's happening here? Many miracles, many, many parts of the body, pain in the sole of the foot, pain in the joints, healed tonight. Tell us, madam. A pain in my foot, in my whole body, and in my hand, also in my head. But when the pastor was preaching, I started feeling my bone twisting in my hand. But later on, a cool down. So I just came to give God a glory. Give the and the Lord pain is gone. Doctor, yeah, what is this? I take away all the pain from my body. Rheumatoid arthritis and the pain down here could be due to a calcaneal spare. Pain in the foot. Over and over, I take the tablets over and over as the tablet finish. Yeah, the pain come back. So I just came to Father, give God a glory. Father, thank you for your power. Give the Lord wow. a wave of free. Give the Lord Clap a wave Clap your hands for Jesus. For you are great. You do miracles so great There is no one else like you There is no one else like you For you are great You do miracles so great There is no one else like you stomach for one year tonight pains are being healed just went like that after the pain prayer. is healed let them come thank you jesus let them come for you are great you what's happened to this lady who is crying so great. she cannot speak there's no one else like everybody stretch out your hand this lady cannot speak father there thank you for your healing power no the name of jesus like be healed and be loose.
o'clock. If you are a church worker, you are a pastor, you must be at the conference. God bless you. At the city hall. At the city hall. And in the morning, new converts, you are here for the Holy Spirit service. 6 a.m. Well, viewers, we are live at uh, okay, Robert's Sports the in... Um, Cape Mount County and the evangelist has joined us tonight. We are blessed to have him with us. Evangelist, thank you for joining us. Liberia has been a very exciting campaign. Um, we were wondering whether you would like to tell the viewers whether you've met with any key personalities. It's, um, everybody knows Liberia is, um, is known for the war. And we're wondering if you've met with any interesting personalities okay, during your time. That's a secret. That's, That's a secret. secret. Oh, all right. But then we know that the miracles have been very outstanding. Some of the nights, it's almost common to see eyes opening. What strikes you each time you pray for the sick and people are healed? Well, it's the grace of God. Every town is a little different. There are different kinds of miracles at different times. So healing is mysterious. Uh, sometimes you, you want some people to be healed, they are not healed. At other times you have people that you don't expect to be healed. Sometimes you have an old person who is about to die, gets healed. And a young person who needs the healing to live, doesn't get healed. So it's the mysterious aspects of God's work. So, Sam has a specific question he wanted to ask you. Yeah. Evangelist, I, I, I just want to know something personal. Because I just can't understand how come all your life is being just led to one direction. Seeking that souls will be one. I want to know. What, I want our viewers to know what is the drive, Evangelist. What drives you to do what you do? The grace of God drives me. <laughs> God's grace, God's grace drives me, and the power of God, the mercy of the Lord, uh, keeps us going. We are glad to be here. It's an honor. It's a great honor to stand in this isolated, very far away little town with just a, a few people. But it's worth coming all this way because a soul is a soul and it's precious to God. So I'm always glad for the opportunity. To, to preach to some people to know the Lord. And for all you know, these may be some of the most important souls that we're ever led to lead to the Lord. Amen. And from here, you're going to Monrovia? Yes, we're going to Monrovia. Um, tomorrow we have a pastor's conference and a miracle service in the morning. And then Monrovia starts the day after. So the trucks will be leaving tomorrow or sometime tomorrow, the day after for, for Monrovia. And, uh, final campaign in Liberia is Monrovia. So you spoke pray with us, pray with us and pray that God's power will move mightily in Monrovia. Evangelist, I know you want to leave, but you yes, talked about the trucks. I understand there was an accident on, one, on, on your journey. Yes, one of our trucks is totally destroyed and one of our buses also overturned and one of our jeeps also somersaulted. So we've had a number of accidents on this particular trip so but through it all we believe that the lord is with us he's strengthening us a lot of people have also fallen ill i think they need more vitamins we all need more vitamins to keep us going and uh, but i have here with me bishop francis i don't know if he's had said hello to the folks out there all right this is bishop francis he is one of our board members come this way he's one of our board members he, he comes for so many of the crusades because he's a soul winning kind of a pastor you know today i was talking about when i was preaching about a pastor an assemblies of god pastor who was not evangelistic and the lord said i want to show you something and he showed him his roommate in hell but bishop francis loves soul winning. he's been to so many different strange locations with us and i think he's here tonight to say hello to folks we are streaming live Bishop Francis, thank you for joining us. Can you tell us what your thoughts are about the campaign so far? It's not your first time, but I know you have something to say. Well, um, thank you very much. Um, right now, I just want to say thank you to all the supporters of this campaign. In fact, I've been to about five or six, 
And like the bishop was saying, each night there are salvation of so many people and there are different dimensions of miracles. God has been with this crusade touching lives and blessing so many people. And I believe that in these end times, this is the work that God has given to the church. And we want to just thank God that a man like Bishop has elected himself. God has selected him to carry the gospel to the many nations. As I have been with the crusade, I've seen that it's a very expensive venture. And I want to appeal to all the supporters that anything that you can give in support of this campaign, the cars, the fuel, um, the food, the medical, the books given, winning souls is not a cheap thing. And tonight we saw so many people. Each campaign that we have gone, we have seen thousands, tens of thousands giving their lives to Jesus. I want to urge you to pray with us and also to support with your cash and your kind and God, each soul that is one for Christ, you also have credit in it in heaven. God bless you for your support. Amen. What, what have you noticed that makes you think that is very expensive? In fact, um, what I've seen tonight, for instance, we drove for about six hours to get here. And um, when you get here, the team that are coming with a bishop alone, a lot of people, accommodation for them, um, places to sleep, food to eat. Um, we come to this place, there are about 30,000 people who probably have never seen a crusade like this before. Each of them has been given books free of charge. We just came from Buchanan, and in Buchanan, each person received three books. We had pastor's conference, and in the pastor's conference, they received so many books. All this cost a lot of money. And in fact, if you want to quantify, um, I think the bishop will be the one who will be able to put a figure on it, but it's in hundreds of thousands of dollars each crusade. And I want to urge you that anything that you can do to make sure this campaign goes on, do that and God will richly bless you. Amen. Evangelist, um, Bishop Francis says you could quantify. I know it's probably not the, the best time to do so, but what goes into putting the crusade together? Our crusade in Liberia has cost us about $320,000 as a fact. That's the cost of what we are doing here. Of a million dollars. Yeah. Uh, 320,000 US dollars. And actually the budget has gone up because um, I was just told yesterday that we have an extra bill of $20,000 for some fuel, so many things that have come up. So, I mean, and that plus the cars which have broken down, the, we have to, I mean, everything, they are destroyed and all that. So the cost of all that, if you quantify that, it goes into much more. Robertsport is a very poor town. I'm sure even if we did take an offering, it wouldn't even cover the cost of fuel? Not at all. It's a very small town, very poor people. Liberia is a very poor country. It's one of the poorest countries in the whole wide world. It has been ravaged by war and has not recovered from the war. It has not recovered. It's like a large village. The whole country is like one large village. It's amazing. I don't know what your impressions are. And even one of the things I was going to say is that I've been with three crusades so far and each of the places, they said this is the first thing that has ever happened. So nobody has ever been to those places. In fact, when we were coming here, if you look at the map, this is like the end of the world. <laughs> nobody has been here. So it's something that needs to go on. In fact, we were thinking, do we drive all the way to this place and do just one night and back? Because it's like the end of the world. The, the sea is just here. And um, that is one lovely thing about this campaign, that it is taken to the hinterlands, go into the world and share my gospel uh, from Jerusalem to Judea and to the outermost part of the world. And that is what this is fulfilling. And if you look at Liberia like an American town, that nobody has been here. Nobody, not such a scale has happened in Kakata, not such a scale has happened in Buchanan. And it means that there's a lot of work for us to do. And we've got to pray for this setup. We've got to pray for the bishop and support him so that he can carry this work um, to the hinterlands. A last word for the viewers. Pray for us. We need the grace of God every day. Pray for us. That's what I say.
Thank you so much for joining us live on Healing Jesus TV. We'll be in Monrovia in a couple of days, so please do join us on Facebook, Doug Hayward Mills, on Twitter, at Evangelist Doug, and share your comments, your thoughts, and pray with us as the bishops have spoken. God bless you and see you in Monrovia.